Hello guys, I'm Yadika Reddy and welcome to my channel HVI Tutorials. In this video, I will explain about how you can add the system information or environment information to the extent reports. So what exactly is this system information or environment information here? So when you are working on any test automation, sometimes you need to provide the extra details also into the extent reports guys. Like your operating system name and your operating system version and your Java installed version and browser name along with its version and you will be executing your test cases on some application, right? So that application will have a URL and it will have a username and password also. So you need to provide the URL of the application, username of the application and password of that application. So all these kind of details you need to provide inside the report, fine? But why do you need to provide it? What is the purpose of these things basically? So whenever the report is generated, you will be providing that report to some people, right? Either it is management or developer or your manual testers or maybe some other tester also. So they don't know that on which environment you have executed your test cases, on which browser you have executed your test cases and what is the username that you have used for executing these test cases. All these things they don't know basically, right? So if there are any failures and if they want to analyze those failures, how they will do that? In every environment, the failure will not be there, right? Sometimes the failures are specific to one environment only, one browser only, one username only sometimes. So in that type of scenario, how they are going to triage the issue? They don't know how to do that, right? Because they don't have these details. So that is why it is always advisable to provide these details into the extent reports, guys. So if you provide these details also into the extent reports while generating itself, if you provide the report to anyone, they have all this information. So they don't need to come back to you for asking these details guys. They can directly get that information from the extent reports and they can look into the issue also. Correct? Sometimes what happens in your company, you might be having multiple environments and maybe you are executing your test cases on multiple environments. And if you don't provide this information to the extent reports and if you are directly generating it, you will provide this report to the developer. So after two days or one day, developer is coming back to you and asking on which environment you have executed this test then even you will forget that, right? Because you are executing on multiple environments and even you don't remember that on what environment you have executed that and what is the username for that environment. All these things you might forget, right? So to avoid all these kind of scenarios, we need to provide the system information and environment information to the extent reports, guys. Fine? So now let's see how we can do this thing. So now, first what I will do, I will show you how we can get this information, guys. So if it is an app URL or username or password, we might be storing that in the properties file or JSON file. So it's easy to get that because you know how to read the properties file and how to read the JSON file. So you can get the data from there and you can directly provide it into the extent reports. But there are some things like Java version, operating system name, and if you want to get the browser name and browser version. So all these things, how you are going to get it. We should not actually hard code these values guys. If you hard code, tomorrow if you are updating your Java version, again you need to modify these details, right? If you forgot to modify, what happens? Your old Java version details only will go into the extent reports. That is not a good thing, right? So that is why we need to dynamically get these versions and append it to the extent reports. That means provide in the extent reports, guys. So first let me show you how we can do that. And then we will add that information to the extent reports. So I'll create another class here. I'll just name it as test. And I need one main method also here. And here I'll show you how you can get that information guys. So if you want to get the browser related information that you can only get when you open the browser, right? By default, your system might have multiple browsers like Opera, Edge and Safari, Chrome, Firefox, all these browsers will be installed in your system. But you want to get the browser version which you are actually working on, correct? So from Selenium, if you are working on only Chrome browser, only that Chrome browser information you need to provide in the extent reports. You should not provide Edge browser information, Opera browser information, and all these kind of informations, right? But how you are going to get that? So let me show you guys. So first let me write the code for opening the Selenium browser. Webdriver.chromedriver.setup. So I'm not actually using the system.set property here, but instead of that, I'm using the webdriver manager. Then I will write web driver driver so after this i'm going to close the driver driver dot quit and before closing the driver we need to get the browser version right 
So if you want to get the browser version, there is a method guys. That method is only available on the remote web driver instance. But how you are going to get the remote web driver instance? I mean, we don't know what kind of driver instance we are actually creating, right? So it's very easy guys. You can just typecast your driver instance into remote web driver instance. So just type remote web driver here. So irrespective of what driver instance you are actually creating, like whether it is type of web driver or whether it is type of Chrome driver or Firefox driver, you can simply cast your driver object into remote web driver instance. Fine. So on top of this, we have a method called get capabilities. So here we have a method called get capabilities. So this method will return the capabilities for your remote web driver instance, basically your driver instance, you can say. Fine. So it is going to return the capabilities. So I will store those capabilities here. This capabilities is an interface guys, just like this web driver, this capabilities is also an interface. That is why we cannot create an instance for that directly, but we can create the reference for that. Correct. So I'll just mention this as capabilities only. So now within this capabilities object, you have all the capabilities information. Now out of that, we need to get only specific capabilities. So what is the capability we want to get? We want to get the browser name as well as the browser version, right? So this is the method for getting the browser name guys. Get browser name is the method that you need to use for getting the browser name. So this will give you only the browser name. It will not return the version also. It will only return you the browser name. For getting the version, you need to use another method that is get version. So this will return you the browser name and browser version. Okay. So this will give the browser name and this will give the browser version. So now let me just run this. So you can see Chrome 99 is the version. The entire version is being provided here. And if you want to just remove this, you can apply some substring and all and you can remove that. Fine. So this is how you are going to get the browser version guys. So this is clear, right? So next, how you are going to get the operating system version and Java installed version. So those details will be available in the system properties, right? Those are related to the system. So those details will be available in the system properties. So in Java, if you want to set or if you want to get any system property, we have a class called system. So inside the system, we have a method called set property and we have a method called get property also, fine. So you might have already used the set property method. So while you are opening any browser instance, use this method and here you will write webdriver.chrome.driver and you will set the driver executable path here. Correct. So in the similar way, you can get the property values also. So for that, there are few methods here. Get properties, get property, get property. Fine. So get properties will give you all the properties along with its value and get property of string key. If you provide any key to this method, it will return the value of that key. Fine. And the last one is also same, but if the key is not available, what is the default value that you want to return? So in this scenario, if the key is not available, it is going to return the null value. But if the key is not available and if you want to return any specific value, you can use this method. Fine. So I will use this get property. So if I directly type os.name, I'll get the operating system name. This information I already know because I have worked with this. But if you want to know how you can get to know, it's very simple guys. So inside this, we have a method called get properties, right? Here you can see all the things are mentioned, right? What is the key name? That thing is mentioned here. Or if you want to just print all the properties into the console, you can do that. Get properties dot list. And you need to provide the print stream object here. So system dot out. So it is going to return the print stream object only, right? So now let me just execute this. So it will get all the properties guys. Now you open this console and you see it is returning all the properties along with its values. So if you want to get the Java version, you can probably use this one. And if you want to get the operating system name, you can use this one OS dot name. So it is going to return the Windows 10. So there is one small problem guys. So my operating system is actually Windows 11. But even in Windows 11 also, it is returning the operating system name as Windows 10 only. 
because I have upgraded my operating system from Windows 10 to Windows 11. So there was some issue and Microsoft team is looking into that. But until then, if you are getting the operating system as Windows 10 and if you are using the Windows 11, don't freak out guys. Fine. So it is an expected behavior. And if you want to get the country where you are actually located, you can use this property. So like this, there are so many properties, you see. So if you want to see the user home, so this is the property. So all these properties, you can get it guys. Only if you want to get the operating system version, you can get it like this. So without operating system name, if you want to get the version only, you can use this one. And if you want to get the JRE version, you can use this property. Fine, java.runtime.version. And if you want to get the username who logged into this operating system, then you can use this property. Like this, there are so many versions. So you can use any version which is actually suitable for you. You got it? So for Java, I'm going to use this one guys, java.version. But there are different different methods here. Java.vm.version, Java.version, Java.runtime.version and here Java.specification.version. Anything you can use. Fine. So let me just use these things and show you guys. So I'll just comment out this system.out.println and inside this system dot get property. So I'm going to use the get property and I need to provide the key. So OS dot name means you are going to get the OS. And similarly, let me just copy this thing. And if you want to get the Java version, you need to type Java dot version. And along with this, if you want to get any other system property, then you can get that guys. But I need only these two things. So I'm only executing this. Now you see Windows 10 and your Java version is this one. So here we can just append one text also saying that Java space this one. So now if you execute, it will clearly understandable format Windows 10 Java 17.0.1, right? So these properties values we are going to log or we are going to provide into the extent reports guys. So along with this, if you want to provide the app URL, app username, app password, you need to get those things from the properties file or JSON file. Fine. So now let me just copy this and paste it chapter nine. So within this, I'm not changing anything here. All I need to do is just log this information. So where you will actually log this information? Do you need to log this information for Spark reporter or extent reporters? You are going to log this information for the extent reports guys, because for Spark reporter, if you log, if you are generating multiple reports for every report, you need to provide this information, right? But if you are executing your test cases in your operating system, these system properties are not going to change, right? If there is anything specific to one report, then you need to provide in the Spark reporter. But if it is common across all the reports, then you need to provide that in the extent reports, right? Because this is the engine. So here I'll just use the method called set system info. So first you need to provide the key and then value. So key can be anything guys. So it's not like you have used OS dot name here. So you have to use only OS dot name here. No, it's not like that. So this key is going to be written in the extent reports. So just like this, you see OS, Windows 10, RAM, 8 GB, ROM, 500 GB. So basically RAM and ROM, nobody is going to log because it's waste of time, right? Browser information, app URL, all these things we are going to log. So I will say OS and how do I get the OS? I need to use system.getPropertyOS.name, correct? And then I'm going to copy this method multiple times here. And the next one is Java version. So how you will get the Java version? Here you need to change this key to Java dot version. Fine. And the next one is browser. So I'm going to append the browser name as well as the browser version directly here guys. So for browser version, we are not going to use the system properties. What we are going to use? We are going to use this piece of code, correct? So first let me uncomment this. So let's add these three lines on the top. And then 
we need these things capabilities dot get browser name plus which means i am appending the text another thing it's like concatenation and this one browser name as well as browser version and once the report is generated i will close the browser so driver dot quit so these are the properties and along with this i'll just provide the app url so now i'm hard coding this app url but in your case you need to get it from the properties file guys fine let's say www.hyrtutorials.com fine and let's provide the username also so this is the username probably and next we'll provide the password i'm not going to provide my actual password guys fine so now let me just run this so where do you need to see this information so now we have logged this system related information but where this will be displayed so this information will be displayed inside the dashboard guys so if you click on the dashboard and if you come down you can see system or environment so inside this the entire information is actually displayed right so let me change this to normal standard theme so that you can clearly see now you see operating system is of windows 10 java version is 17.0.1 browser is windows 10 sorry i think in browser i forgot to change okay so i used something wrong way here yeah so now let me just run this one more time now let me go back to this and let's change this okay so now you see os is windows 10 java version is 17 browser is chrome 99 version and app url is so and so username is this one password is this one so here if you want to provide a space you can do that it's just a normal string concatenation right so you can add one space also here and if you run this now you will get the browser version with space chrome then nine space 99 okay so if you see chrome space 99 and your entire version is displayed here so this is how you are going to log your system or environment information guys so here i have logged only the required fields but in your scenario if you want to log few more details you can log that there is nothing wrong guys if you want to log few more details like your application name and all these things like your base uri if you are working on the api automation you have some base uri right so if you want to log the base uri so all those things you can actually log right so there is no limit you can log n number of things in this one guys there is no limit so based upon your usage and requirement you need to log this information but this is like minimum information right your operating system java version browser version app url username password so these are the minimum required fields that you need to provide inside the report fine so i hope you understood this video guys if you have any doubts please let me know in the comment section below and thank you for watching bye bye